Hello, Honors 10, and welcome to your first flip video of the Clauses and Sentence Structure Unit. Today, we're going to be focusing on independent, subordinate, and adjective clauses. Our goal is to be able to identify independent versus subordinate clauses, and then also identify the words that are used to join clauses together. First, we need to talk about independent clauses. An independent clause expresses a complete thought and can stand alone as a sentence. It contains a subject and a verb. So think of it just as a sentence. An example? would be I like chocolate. It has a subject, I. It has a verb, like. It expresses a complete thought. Now, independent clauses can be joined together. In order to join those independent clauses, you can use fanboys. Remember, coordinating conjunctions is just a fancy term for fanboys. Those fanboys are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Now, if you're going to join two independent clauses together, you can use a fanboy, but you have to include a comma before the fanboy. So for example, we have two independent clauses. I like chocolate. I will eat candy too. Those can be joined together with a fanboy, but you need to put a comma in front of that fanboy. We also need to talk about subordinate clauses today, which are similar to independent clauses, because a subordinate clause does contain a subject and a verb, but it does not express a complete thought, and it cannot stand alone as, as a sentence. Think of it as a fragment. A subordinate clause also begins with either a subordinating conjunction or a relative pronoun. We'll talk about those terms in a moment here. An example of a subordinate clause is because I said so. That's a fragment. It begins with one of those words that we'll talk about in a minute. It has a subject, it has a verb, but it doesn't express a complete thought, so we call it a subordinate clause. Now, on the screen you see two lists. You see subordinating conjunctions and relative pronouns. These are the words that begin subordinate clauses. If you do not know these words, you will have a much more difficult time identifying subordinate clauses within sentences. You need to pause the screen and write down both of these lists. One more thing to talk about with relative pronouns is that the words that, which, who, whom, and whose, they are words that signal subordinate clauses and they can have two functions. They can signal the clause, but they can also act as the subject within that subordinate clause. And we'll take a look at some examples of that in a moment. All right, we need to talk about our first subordinate clause today. There are three kinds of subordinate clauses, and the first that we're going to talk about is an adjective clause. An adjective clause is a type of subordinate clause that is used as an adjective to modify a noun or a pronoun. Because they're adjectives, they behave the same way that any adjective does, and the same rules will be true with uh, any adjectives. So our adjective clauses are going to tell us either which one or what kind of a noun or a pronoun. And because they're adjectives, they can be removed from a sentence. The sentence will still make sense without it. It'll just be less descriptive. And they may or may not include commas. The reason I bring this up is because um, if you see commas within a sentence, pay attention to them. They may be helping you to identify a subordinate clause within a sentence. All right, let's take a moment to practice um, independent versus subordinate clauses. You'll see in the sentences that there is an underlined clause. Our job is to identify if it's independent or subordinate. Number one, because the amount of sunlight changes, that is not a complete sentence, so this one is a subordinate clause. We should practice getting um, in the hang of identifying the word that begins the subordinate clause. That subordinating conjunction is because, and then also finding the subject and the verb to make sure that it actually is a clause. The amount is our subject. It's not sunlight because of sunlight is a prep phrase and can't contain a subject. And then changes is the verb. Number two, it looks larger. That's a sentence. So this one is independent. Number three, he forgot to comb his hair. That could be a sentence. So this one is independent. Number four, who recently moved to New York? This one's a little tricky because if you um, are thinking to yourself that there could be a question mark at the end of it and then it would be a complete sentence, that could be true. However, don't put a question mark at the end. Assume that there is a period, which would then make this a fragment and then it would be a subordinate clause. Now, the relative pronoun who begins this subordinate clause, and we still need to find the subject and verb. Now, I know that the verb is moved, and in a subordinate clause, the subject is going to appear before the verb. So my subject in this one is the relative pronoun. Who moved is my subject and verb. Number five, he was tired. That can be a sentence. So this one is an independent clause. Let's practice adjective clauses. On this screen, we're going to practice finding the subordinate clause 
that is the adjective. We're going to find the relative pronoun that begins the adjective clause, and then we're going to find the subject and verb of the clause. We're also going to identify the word or words that the adjective clause modifies in the sentence. Number one, there are commas to help us. And I see the word who, which is a relative pronoun. So my adjective clause is who was born in the United States. I'm going to continue underlining until I hit a punctuation mark. And what's the subject and verb of that clause? Who is my subject? And then was, was born is going to be my verb in that sentence. Now, who is that describing or what is that describing? Who was born in the United States? T.S. Eliot is what or who was born in the United States and what is described by the subordinate clause. In number two, there are no commas to help us, but I do see a relative pronoun, the word that, which begins my subordinate clause, that it will run. I'm going to continue underlining until I hit a period. My subject, it will run, is my verb phrase. And then when I'm looking for the word that that adjective clause modifies, I'm looking for a word that either touches it um, or is very close to the adjective clause. What will it run? The course is what it will run. All right, number three, I have commas to help me. I see the relative pronoun which, which begins my subordinate clause, which are an endangered species. I continue underlining until I hit a punctuation mark. And then I'm going to say, what's my subject and verb? Now, are is my linking verb. Some people might be tempted to think species is a subject, but remember, in a subordinate clause, the subject is before the verb, so which is the subject. And then what is the endangered species? The gorillas is the word modified by the adjective clause. Number four, again, I have a comma to help me, and then I see the relative pronoun who. So my clause is who will mail it tomorrow. Um, and then I'm going to find my verb. Will mail is my verb. And remember, my subject will appear in front of my verb. So who is my subject? And then who will mail it tomorrow describes father. All right, last thing. Go to my webpage and take the practice quiz that is under the clauses and sentence structure unit. The practice quiz is titled Adjective Clause Practice Activity. You'll see 10 sentences. Take the quiz. After you're done taking it, scroll down and check your answers. And then if there are any discrepancies, be prepared to ask about those discrepancies when you come to class, as well as any questions that you may have about our video today.